Now let's move on to discuss the spinal nerves. Information traveling from the brain down through the tracks of the spinal cord exit the spinal cord through the spinal nerves. There are a total of 31 pairs of spinal nerves in the human nervous system, and they're divided into the following categories. 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and also in the sacral region is the 31st spinal nerve, the costageal nerve. Each of the 31 nerves includes the connections to the peripheral nervous system. Dorsal connections bring information to the central nervous system, whereas ventral connections send commands to the periphery. Each nerve includes afferent sensory neurons from the periphery and efferent motor neurons to the periphery. Spinal nerve distribution. In the cervical region of the spinal cord, there are a total of eight spinal nerves, C1 to C8. The spinal nerves are named based on the vertebrae following them. The first one exits between the skull and C1. In the thoracic region of the spinal cord, there are a total of 12 spinal nerves, T1 to T12, and they are named based on the adjacent thoracic vertebrae. In the lumbar region, there are five spinal nerves, and they are named based on the adjacent lumbar vertebrae. In the sacral region of the spinal cord, there are five spinal nerves, S1 to S5, and also the 31st spinal nerve, the costageal spinal nerve. The spinal nerves lead to the peripheral nerves, and peripheral nerves have specific coverings. The peripheral nerves are covered by three layers of specialized connective tissue, the epineurium, the perineurium, and the endoneurium. The outer layer is the epineurium. This is made up of dense irregular connective tissue. The next layer is the perineurium. It's made up of collagenous and elastic fibers. This layer divides the nerve into bundles of axons that make up compartments known as a fascicle. On the innermost layer is the endoneurium. This connective tissue contains a few fibrocytes and it surrounds the individual axons. Capillaries in the endoneurium provide oxygen and nutrients for the axons and the Schwann cells. Clinical Challenge Exam Question A 34-year-old man is diagnosed with a disease which specifically damages the perineurium. Based on this information, which of the following would be correct? A. The perineurium is the outermost layer of the peripheral nerve. B. The disease in this patient would prevent the normal compartmentalization of the peripheral nerve into bundles of axons. C. The perineurium is the innermost layer of the peripheral nerve. D. The disease in this patient affects one of the four specialized layers that cover the peripheral nerves. Or E. The peripheral nerve layer affected in this patient's disease normally surrounds each individual axon. Here's the answer to this question. This question tests your knowledge of the different layers of the tissue that cover the peripheral nerves. The correct answer for this question was B. The disease in this patient would prevent the normal compartmentalization of the peripheral nerve into bundles of axons. This image depicts how the ventral root and dorsal root form the spinal nerve. Exiting from the spinal nerve is the dorsal ramus and the rami communicantes. The spinal nerve is composed of the dorsal and ventral root. The spinal nerve itself then divides into two main pathways, the dorsal ramus and the ventral ramus. The thoracic spinal nerve, as well as the first two lumbar spinal nerves, also form the rami communicantes. The dorsal ramus delivers sensory information and motor innervation to a specific segment of skin and to muscles of the neck and back. The ventral ramus supplies the ventrolateral surfaces of the body, along with the limbs.
the spinal nerve dermatomes. Each specific body region is monitored by a pair of spinal nerves. The segmental organization of spinal nerves and the sensory innervation of the skin are related. The area of skin innervated by the right and left spinal nerve of a single spinal segment is known as a dermatome. When mapped, the dermatomes delineate a set of bands or rings on the surface of the body. This can be seen in the image on the right. When viewing the map, there appears to be distortion in ring formation. The organization of the dermatomes is best revealed when one bends over to stand on both hands and feet. The following is a clinical note on shingles. Shingles is a viral infection caused by the varicella zoster virus, or VSV. This attacks the dorsal root of the spinal nerves. The VSV is the same virus that causes chickenpox in childhood. Shingles is believed to occur from remnant viral pockets near the dorsal roots that were not eradicated after recovering from chickenpox earlier in life. The infection leads to pain in the affected dermatome and a skin rash typically located on the torso of the body. Treatment is supportive to reduce the pain, decrease the duration of infection, and limit long-term side effects. In certain regions of the body, the ventral rami do not proceed directly to their targets they innervate. Instead, they enter a nerve plexus. The innervation of the head, neck, and limbs comes from a blending of the ventral rami and spinal nerves. This is known as a nerve plexus. These nerve plexuses are formed during early development, when large muscle groups share a common nerve supply. There are four major nerve plexuses in the body. The cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, the lumbar plexus, and the sacral plexus. Let's look at each plexus individually, beginning with the cervical plexus. The cervical plexus, as shown in this anterior view image, extends from C1 to C4. It serves the muscles of the head and neck. The muscles innervated by this plexus include the laryngeal muscles, the levator scapulae, the scalenes, trapezius muscle, and the diaphragm via the phrenic nerve. The brachial plexus. The brachial plexus serves the pectoral girdle and the upper limb. There are three trunks, a superior, middle, and lower trunk. These trunks then divide into an anterior and posterior division, and eventually these give rise to the major nerves of the upper limb, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, and the radial nerve. This image depicts both the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. The lumbar plexus serves the abdominal muscles and the skin of the anterior and posterior surfaces of the thigh. The ventral rami of T12 to L4 make up this plexus. And the major nerves of the lumbar plexus include the genitofemoral nerve, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, and the femoral nerve. The sacral plexus is made up of the ventral rami of L4 to S4, and the nerves of the sacral plexus are the sciatic nerve, the gluteal nerves, and the pudendal nerve. These nerves innervate the gluteus muscles, the skin of the perineum, thigh and leg, and the muscles of the perineum. The following is a clinical note on peripheral neuropathies. Peripheral neuropathies are also known as peripheral nerve palsies, and these are conditions that lead to the loss of motor and sensory function in the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral neuropathy can be classified based on the number of nerves that are affected. Mononeuropathy is for a single nerve, or polyneuropathy, when more than one nerve is involved. There are a number of causes of peripheral neuropathy, including infection, chemical injury, physical injury, and in some cases, side effects from certain medications. 
Peripheral neuropathy can be diagnosed based on symptoms, physical exam, and the results of nerve conduction studies. The treatment is mostly symptomatic, including medication to reduce pain, swelling, and in some cases, electrolyte blockers.